they used to call me uh, Chuck and Scanlon, um, Crazy Man, uh, Chuck and Joe, and stuff like this. They got they gave me these names because of one reason, because I was crazy. You know, that's what people thought I was, because I act always funny and crazy and stuff. The other reason was because um, I was just. Uh, I had bought a shotgun and I saw it off and people saw me carrying a shotgun. <clears throat> and uh, that's how I got, you know, you know, this name, you know, Shotgun Joe. And I came up here, the guys in here in this institution called me uh, Shotgun Joe. My mother robbed this guy named Buck, and uh, one night he let me use the car. And this lady pulled, and I was following this lady in the back, and uh, as we got into this intersection, I thought she was gonna kept, keep on going. I was, I was high, and I was really fucked up, you know? And uh, we were going, and the lady put on her brakes, and I, my reaction was slow, and I hit her in the back. The car spun around, and uh, after the car spun around, I, I think I hit my head or something, but I got back up and I started the car again. I took off down the street. Now, the apartment where I lived wasn't too far. i say about 200 yards at the most, you know, from my, uh, you know, where I hit the lady. And I started going down the street. The lady started following me, and another guy got in with her. Uh, and I got into another car, and, and he started following me, too. So we turned down Capitol Avenue, and we parked there, and uh, the lady was sitting lady jumped out of a car and says to me, uh, Sonny, come here. And I was going to run, but, and maybe, and thought the car was going to be stolen, but I walked over and she says, I'm, I'm going to call the cops. But then the other guy who follows her, she waved to him and said, uh, don't worry, you can, uh, go now. You know, it's all right. So she goes to the telephone booth and she, I'm trying to, I'm begging her, please, lady, don't call the cops. I don't have any insurance. I didn't tell her I, I didn't have any license because, uh, if I did, she would really call the cops. I almost had her. I said, please, I'll give you my address and my telephone number and everything. I was just going to be all bullshit I was going to give her. You know, this was going to be all bull. And so she, uh, she walked in the telephone booth. I was, I was drunk and I was scared. And she just picked up the receiver on the phone. She was, I say she was about 60 years old. She just picked up the receiver and I hit her. I caught her right in the face. She fell right against the telephone booth. She fell down. I knocked her cold. She fell down. I picked her up, put her over my shoulder. Her dress was way up here. You can see her legs and everything. I picked her up. I covered the umbrella. I walked about, about from here, about 20 feet, to the back to the Cadillac. It was parked in a parking lot. And I laid her on the seat. And I took the, tele uh, took the umbrella, put the umbrella over, shut the door, and I took off. Oh, yeah, very friendly. Gee, he can talk to you about anything at all. I think he's very friendly. Um, I walked into the place, I was really, I was really high, I was really fucked up. I had a, my shotgun, it was a sawed-off, double-barrel shotgun. And I walked up to it, and I, I walked up to the person, me and my buddy, and we walked in. I had the shotgun on my side, I said, lady, this is a stick-up. The lady just froze down the table, and I took the shotgun, and I rammed it, and I hit her on the forehead. So she put the cash, the money on the cash box, I mean, on the table, and she says to me, um, what do you mean, this is a hold-up? I said, this is a hold-up, lady. Yeah, there, there was a certain a certain uh, brashness about him that I couldn't help but admire, and, and certainly these are traits, even though they might be in the wrong direction uh, at, at this time, uh, I, I saw that could be developed in another area. He, uh, he uh, indicated to me that he could be somewhat of a leader. We uh, went down to this Casaloma restaurant, on Willisfield Avenue, way down the street, about a half a mile, good three-fourths of a mile. And we walked in there, and me and me and another guy, and we walked in there, and uh, I saw this guy yelling out pizza orders. You know, one mozzarella to go, you know, and stuff like that. One mozzarella to go. And so I went over there, and uh, nobody was around. They must have went in the back room, because I grabbed the microphone. I was fooling around the switch, and I turned, I went, I went in this and it started going on. So I took the microphone and I walked right over to the, to the where the, uh, everybody's at and I started singing 
I think it was Strangers in the Night, you know, Scooby Dooby Doo, Scooby Dooby. And uh, I think everybody was laughing. The whole place was, I mean, roaring. I, when I stopped, they started clapping. The whole people started clapping. And I was excited because, you know, it was my first, uh, you know, for an audience. Everybody's clapping and everything. And so the guy, remember, I was embarrassed because the guy grabbed me, and my buddy had the pizza. The guy grabbed me, and he started running me to the, these two glass doors. There was one here to open, and one to go into the hallway, and one to go out again. Well, he got me through one of them, and somehow I grabbed them, I turned them around, and I pushed them right through the glass window, and I got up on top of them, and I started hitting them. Boom, boom. My buddy came out, he slipped on some, with mozzarella all over my hands. I'm hitting them. Boom, boom. And this guy's looking, hey, wait a minute, stop, stop. And everybody's on the outside, they're watching us. But you know, people like that, they don't, they don't stop, you know what I mean? I like him personally, yeah, I like him as a person. That's right. I don't uh, dislike any of them, let's put it that way. I don't dislike none of the boys. The bird's name is Oscar, and the cat's name is Smokey Joe. My sister named it after me. And I used to get my sister's sister mad all the time by uh, taking the cat, it was only a small cat about, you know, just a kitten. I used to take the cat and put it right in the bird cage, shut the cage, and let the bird run around. And let the cat, the cat would go after it and try to get it. Or I used to take the bird out of the cage, tie its wings together, and let it run for its life all around the place. It used to, the bird, a bird can run quick when it's, you know, somebody's chasing them. And the cat used to swing at it, knock the bird across the floor. But like I was saying, after it grew up, I didn't tie it down anymore because the cat used to go onto the furniture and wait till it, I opened the cage. The bird used to walk out onto the ledge of the cage and the cat would go after it and caught it in the mouth one time. <laughs> the, cat, the bird got caught by the cat. All right then. <laughs> what about dog? Dog. Right, dog. all right. Brand. All right now. Four distinguishing characteristics of our proper nouns and common nouns. There's one outstanding characteristic about a proper noun. That is, uh, it usually begins with a capital letter. Remember that. <laughs> okay, Scallon. Yeah. Now, what did I say about a proper noun? Yes. Well, that's because he, he knows. He knows. No, I'm asking you. Well, he knows what's going on. Why don't you know what's going on? <laughs> he knows what's going on. Say, look here. Look here, man. I slipped. You slipped? Yeah. Okay, just don't slip again. Now, tell me what noun is. Um, I don't know. Okay. Uh, if you don't want to stay in here and participate with the stuff, you might as well get out of the class. I want you to tell me one good reason why you don't want to be in school. That's all I'm interested in. It's not helping you. Okay. Is it not helping because you don't want to help you? You're not helping yourself. I gave you my reason, right? That's not a reason. That's a reason. You told me to give you one answer, right? I, I gave you. You give me a reason, and that is no reason. Can I leave then? Man, you might as well get out of my class and get out of school. Well, fuck it, I don't want to come to fucking class. Hey, look at here, man. Say, dig here. Come back here, man. I don't want to come back here. Come back here. Hey, look at here. You don't throw my chairs around here, Daddy. No. Come here, pick this chair up and get out. No fucking person. Later, baby. When he is among a group, he has to keep up his image, and that's his big thing. That's the only thing he's concerned with. Oh, I see the utter chaos reigning between his ears, you know. And the only kind of thing, the only kind of string uh, uh, that I can see in his behavior uh, is the way he continually seeks to enhance this image of being, well, some kids talk of him as being a, the comedian, or some kids talk of him as being the hard guy. He loves this image, and he builds on it all the time. He's, he, inside, he's really nothing. He, he has to keep up this, this bravado, this, uh, this, uh, this hero business uh, constantly. The moment he lets up, he's nothing. I think he has no grasp whatsoever of what is going to get him ahead. He is not a dumbbell. He is not a damn fool. But he needs help. And he's creative because this kid could tell a story off the top of his head that is absolutely fantastic, and you can believe every word he says. The, the, the kid is great, but in the direction that he's going, he's not going to live very long, because when he gets out of here, somebody's going to blow him away. 
a cop or somebody else. Yeah, he wants to lead a life of crime, you know? He, he thinks he really digs it. He wants to read books about crime and about big time, mm -hmm. you know. And how do, you argue, how do you argue with a guy like that, you know, when you sit there and you say, look, you know, it's really bad, crime's bad, you know? And you feel like a fool saying, he says, well, you know, it's, some people pick business, some people pick being a lawyer, and I pick being a, a criminal. He's a loser. Yeah, this thing he doesn't see about turning other people off. Yeah, I'm here. What, he's a loser? Yeah. He's a loser, but you better believe it. One minute, you know, he's all right. Next minute, he's coming in the kitchen telling me, you know, what to do in John. He wants to fight and carry on, you know? A lot of times down to school, you know, he'll come up to you and say, uh, well, I don't like you. I'm going to hit you, you know? And just fooling around, right? So you're all set for a fight, and then all of a sudden he'll come out with a joke. Like, he's, he's, he makes your time go by easier. You know, and he's the type of kid that you can't help but like sometimes, but sometimes you, you just can't take him. <laughs> it's too much. I think he's too self-centered, you know, you know. As far as, you know, him talking about, you know, when he goes out into society and that he wants to go, you know, do the same thing, I don't, I don't think he's serious, you know. I don't think nobody could be serious about going back out to doing the same thing, you know, they got you in here the first time, you know. I don't know, Joe's a little, uh, Mixed up, I think. I think it's pretty mixed up. Flies off the handle easy. But he doesn't have to. He's got everything going for him. I mean, he's got it all on the ball. He's got an image thing. And in here, anyway, I don't know him on the bricks, but in here he's got an image thing that he tries to maintain. You know, he tries to keep cool and everything. I don't think he, he he's that honest with himself as he should be, man. He should look at himself and say, man, where are you going? What are you doing? You know? December, December, January, February, March, April, May, 3rd, 1970. It is a long time, isn't it? October, November, December. Be here Christmas. Salvation Army comes in and plays the old band movie, <laughs> you know? Yeah, uh, New Year's. You know, this is the South Block here, you know, and, uh, you know, from the camera, this is going to be shown. Uh, people think, you know, you can go right through these these windows, you know, if you wanted to get out or something, you know. But uh, <laughs> you're not going to get out because there's still reinforcements all here. The window, as you see, you see it? You're not going to get through it because it's, it's solid steel all the way. And if you put a chair or anything in it, you, you can forget about it. Because the only, only way you're ever going to get through here is, is, is a crane and a ball going right through here. That's the only way you're going to get through. I get three meals a day, Eric. Uh, food, relaxation. But there's nothing better than being on that brick. Nothing better. And walk down the street. And, oh, boy. I'm, I want to see, there's only, there's only one reason I want to go on the back of the street, and this is the honest to God truth. I want to take care of my sisters, or my sister. Probably have to take care of Betty Ann, too. But I want to take care of them. I really do. I took care of them before, I want to take care of them again. When I get out there, if shit, yeah, fuck yeah. They get what they want, I'll steal for them. I'll steal for them. Probably every bit of money I gave them, was either stolen or maybe if I had a job, I get. But the big money I gave him, like seventy, eighty, ninety dollars to buy clothes, and they'll verify this. It was hot money. They bought. I, I didn't tell them it was hot. 
But I love that girl. I'd give her anything. Any fucking thing. Anything she fucking wanted, she's got. Oh, she's kicking a hole. Oh, this is my, my prayer book. I uh, get them every month, here. Eh? Monthly Miss Alette. I'm an altar boy if you want to know about me, huh? Big shit. I'll read a couple to you, Eric. Get mom. Let me read one from... Well, I'll fuck moms. Uh, you want me to read a letter from my sister? Are you getting out this January? She doesn't know I got another bid. That what Miss Bush told me. So in your next letter, I want you to tell me so I'll know. Um, if there's anything you want when I come up or any, any more questions you want answered, you just write to tell me. So don't worry about me. I've been a good girl. And I'm, I'm ever in the, I'm always in the house at, or at Vivian's house, so don't worry. Betty Ann told me to tell you that she loves you. Joe, I got to clean the house, so write soon, and don't ever forget I love you and misses, miss you. Bye-bye, your sister, Diana. I miss you a lot, Joe and Diana, forever, brother, no doubt about it. I love you, brother. Is that good? Huh? Wait a minute, let me find it. You know, it's hard to find these letters. Audrey Bush, my social worker. Dear Joe, she has got no fucking right to call me dear. It's Mr. Scanlon, right? Because I don't respect her. She respects me. I'm not that close with her. I thought I would drop you a short note. And a note. Look how long the note is. To let you know how things are going. I know you've been aware your mother was hospitalized during the later part of August. I don't want to know about this crap. Because I don't care about my mother. I don't, have, I don't want nothing to do with her. She's now back home, still in close contact with Dr. Lasko, alias, alias Mr. Hyde. We had been trying to work out a ride for her to Cheshire. I told him I, told him I didn't want nobody to come see me but my sister. Unfor unfortunately, she was hospitalized. We could not carry through on this plan. Thank God. Peace. It was on 4th of July, I never forgot. He won a lawsuit for a new car, $23,000. He didn't give me no money, just took Joe for the weekend. He said, be back. He never came back with Joe. He had, had enough money to have a good time in Disneyland. And I never could find Joe. So he came back, it wasn't the same anymore. That's what makes him that way today. He was always good to me. Uh, like I say, he took me away when I was about... Um, about five, five or six, I remember I was just going to go to school. It took me out of a car accident, took me to um, California, Nevada, shit like that. Out of the $1,600, or tw I think sixty or 2600 I got out of a car accident. My son came back when he was 12 years old. And he was all disturbed. And uh, the woman that used to take care of him, used to pull his hair, used to put him in a corner. And I never knew that. So we had the police warn all the state to find where the husband is to take Joe home. So Joe came home. He didn't even know I was the mother. His father used to say, your mother was dead. And I never forgot. Well, the first arrest was, my mother says I hit her. I wouldn't, at first, she tells me to leave the house and tells me not to leave the house. But finally, I said, okay, I'm packing up and everything. And there's a big argument in the house and a lot of, I didn't, they said they said I strike her, but I didn't strike her. To this day, to this day, this was happened in '67, I think it was. I didn't strike her. And so um, downstairs, they called the cops. The cops came. My mother was all upset. She started saying I hit her and every fucking thing. My sisters were crying. They denied it. My mother said, Yeah, I want him arrested for assault. He hit me and shit. Well, he bangs the door and he's angry, but he never put a hand on me, you know. And he walks away and then he comes back and says, Mom, I'm sorry. But you don't cry. I said, shit, breach a piece by assault, $10 fine, $15 fine. That was all right. Went to court and I pleaded guilty and they gave me nine months. It's age of 16 in jail. Nine months. And so you lied to mama. You start begging the door, don't call me a lie, he says. Tell you the truth. So he got mad, he banged the door and he went out, started to cool off, and then he comes back and sit down. Then he put his head down and he started crying. I so said, you hurt your mother so much. You don't realize how sick I am. Been in the hospital almost six times. A heart attack, high blood pressure. I worry too much about 
my, my Joe. Always worry. The doctor said I worry too much about him. I never have a chance to see him. Cause I'm, if I'm in the hospital, I'm moving. But I gotta take it easy. I can't go so far away. Kind of have a heart attack. She called the cops. I mean, picked up the phone and called the cops. Well, I ran out, ripped the phone out of the wall. I ran back in my room. Then I walked back in my room. She kept on yelling. I told her, why don't you go to sleep? The lady has heart trouble. My mother has heart trouble and she's nervous and shit like that. And uh, she'll use that as a, a crutch for herself. Because I love Joe. I gave him everything he wanted. He didn't have to go on and steal it. If I didn't have it, I just didn't have it. So live without it. But he's the type to go out and get it to satisfy me. But I, I didn't believe the idea. I didn't like the idea at all. I knew he was doing something wrong when he comes home late. The ice, I'm just like the father. He says, I'm, you're just like your old man, she says. I don't think my father ever got busted. I'm not quite sure. I think so, maybe. But um, I don't think I'm like my old man. Joe used to come home 4 o'clock in the morning. I asked where you've been. All his friends house. They were stealing left and right. That's how he got the money, and I never knew it. I don't. I just don't care about my mother anymore. I love her. But she's not going to hurt me like she did so many fucking years. That's for sure. Like I told him in his letters, in my letters, you can't explain the kind of feeling that I have for him. He just has to know that I love him. And then I'll never try to hurt him. I saw the shrink Monday, and he says, I just worry too much. I keep my problems all inside, he says. It's the best thing for Joe, and I think for all of us, like, is that when my brother comes out, I know for definite that I'm going to go with them. I mean, that means if Joe gets in trouble, I'm going to be there, too. Because why should my brother get time, you know, when everybody else is sitting home? Because it's just hurting him more, knowing that we're all sitting home. And, like, ha having a good time and going out and everything, and he's not doing that. And what is he locked up in some damn place? Every time I think about my mother and fa father, sister, you know, Rosemary, or anything that, or anything that pisses me off, I, I just go out on the mat, I go into another mood. And I'm not funny no more. I don't fool around no more. You will take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. You will take away the sins of the world and be part of prayer. You will sit at the right hand of the Father and have mercy on us. You alone are holy. You alone are Lord. Lord, be with you. Let us pray. I'm not going to be the one that makes it. What are you scared of? Huh? What are you scared of? What I can do if I, if I blow up. I'm afraid I might hurt somebody. Eric, if I blow up against you, I kill you. That's where I am. I, I, I don't stop. I just keep going. I keep going. Eric, I might hurt somebody. I know I... I hit my sister one time. I let go one time. I hit my sister in, in the side. I busted two of her fucking ribs. No more. No more. Here, can we stop this? I want to go back to myself. Okay? You want to stop? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like to be sad. That's all. I don't like to think. I, don't like to, I just like to be happy. Happy all the time. 